Welcome back to another reflection video of Skatomaville. This is a reflection on volume one, episode 14 on triangulation, which I haven't put it up yet, but you get the point. It turns out that there are people who are explorers who go chart Everest, who do what I'm doing. We figure out a way to get there. A moment for a production note. A sidebar production note. A production side note for you to gain insight. My uh, smartphone is on a tripod right now and I have triangulation going. You should get that. But I want you to note that in what is following this scene is unknown to me at this point. I started doing production yesterday and realized that my phone in the position it was in triggered the auto rotation of uh, setting and it shot all of my sketches in a vertical format. This kind of stuff will happen for you. I want you to be able to recognize three legs of triangulation as certainty, uncertainty, and exploration. Uh, that's where you get to be creative. So here's the production lesson on triangulation. You have to commit to explore, right? Exploration, you have to go there. And while you're going there, you have to pay attention, right? You have to record what's going on. And then you get to tell the story and do the production. And it's in this process, the union of this journey, where the real evidence, the real transformation happens. Because you start noting, the more I explore, the more I'm committed, the more I can pay attention and see things happen that's fabulous the better the story gets, and also the more creative my production gets. You've seen this throughout this Katomaville series. You're seeing it right in this episode. Roger Bannister ran a four minute mile. Sir Edmund Hillary climbed Everest. If someone's done it, then maybe I can too. Abraham Maslow defined actualization. You see, it turns out that there are people who are explorers who go chart Everest, who do what I'm doing. We figure out a way to get there. And then there are people that are called um, pioneers. Right? Pioneers follow an explorer or go with an explorer and they go map out and sort of do the uh, trails like uh, crossing the country, the Oregon Trail. And then there are the settlers those that come in and build the businesses and build the town and establish um, the systems in the area. And we work off of things that are, as an explorer, a primary point is an imperative, right? It's absolutely a compulsion. 
feeling compelled to do this. And sometimes it's a sense of curiosity, right, that, that will help keep you motivated. If you feel these three, you're probably an explorer. But if you're hesitant or reluctant, but still curious, you can follow an explorer as a pioneer. You can still record your video series, do transformations, and still work a job and, and raise a family and do all of this stuff. It just takes a little longer to do it. Um, as a settler, you might just watch, right? You might follow. You might even um, test. Okay, to see how that works. Those are sort of my thoughts following the time that I spent with um, YWAM, right? In Youth with a Mission. This is youth with a mission or youth on a mission. See, one is with, and I've never, I've never, um, I wasn't on a short-term mission. I am still with a mission. I'm still going in that direction. And what I noticed was that there were a couple of other of these points. You see, what I've done is I've pursued physics and technology over the last 30 years since I was participating with this team. And I've watched where information and knowledge have led us and a greater understanding of these. So when I try to get to a union, right, of these three different concepts, I find great deal of support that it's with, I am still with a mission. I'm still carrying it, you see? It's an imperative, I'm compelled, I'm curious. And so those are strengths that I have to keep me going, to endure the process. Almost every one of you are experiencing for the first time this social distancing. And I realized the other day, it's no big deal for me. Why? Well, here's my backstory. You remember the Scarlet Letter, right? The classic book. I wore that label of illegitimate moral leper an outsider not one of us you don't fit you can't have what the others have but you can work just as hard and harder you see how that all works it's not true it was all based off of other people's fears and misunderstandings from childhood you don't have to go there you can understand why you do what you do and triangulation can really work to make that happen And as you can see, it's quite a bit of work to even get a second, let alone a third point of view. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. I'm saying in here, you have to grow dendrites. It's a lot of work. So I want you to put on your thinking cap. I'm going to show you some of the real world application, the real thinking where triangulation affects my day-to-day -day and will yours as well as you progress in both awareness, understanding, and discipline. Right? I have one point of ethics that I was raised not even having born with um, 
the ability to make up falsehoods to lie. To, to ch it's like I have, really have to stretch to even figure out a way of emitting things. And, and the physics is trying to understand the elementary principles of our world. You combine that with society and, and social aspects, and that forms a very interesting series of triangulations. Another one I work with is um, a Christian ethic, right? The Christianity that I, uh, evangelical Christianity and, and what I did uh, after falling off the glacier. And yet I have, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a capitalist. I believe in the free market. And when I combine that with then the whole idea of like, say, leadership, how do I with certainty tell other people when I'm an explorer, I need to find pioneers. You see how these three feed back into this concept. And then let's say pick another three items. Uh, dependence. Uh, independence. And uh, responsibility. Right? Think about those three things. So the idea of triangulation works out sort of like this. You can pick any any group of, of subjects and, and try this. You can self-regulate or it's called mitigation. Right? You can litigate. In other words, be compelled by being uh, uh, sued to do so, or you can be regulated. And so if you think of this, this is self, right? This is um, consequences. And in this case, consequences as well by your regulated, by your being directed. So if you don't have self-mitigation or your ability to change your own trajectory, your society, your civil uh, law systems will, will try to hold you within that, or you will be directed by regulation. This is what we see going on with the information era. In this episode, what I was saying was that if you look to your past, find some facts, they will help you self-mitigate. If you look to your present, then try to find some faith. Or look to your future and find promise. Those things within, you can avoid the consequences of litigation or the uh, constraints of regulation. But that's not happening in the world of technology. So what we have going on, uh, if I do a triangulation finally, is um, these three in the information world. Um, we have public data, which is uh, cameras, right? Um, bank accounts and transactions, all that kind of public data, uh, health data that's available. And we have social media, you know, communications, uh, like texting and cell phones, etc. And this is all voluntary. We give this information up. And then lastly, we have, out of convenience, we submit our data. So we use apps like for the weather, for uh, finding good fuel prices, uh, for locating ourselves. And these apps collect data on where we are what we we believe and what our our sentiment is and so ai is 
being built in order to triangulate between these three and form a good profile of you in order that you can be regulated by others for their purposes. That's probably filled your head up for now. This is what I uh, wake up to and work with every day. These scratchings of concepts and ideas in order to self-mitigate, uh, to use my own compulsion to <laughs> you know, to put it simply, it's just to really be able to get my butt out of Skatomaville. And I so much want that for you. I don't want machine learning to win over you, to narrow your worldview, to constrict what your possible outcomes are. What I really want for you is the freedom of self-mitigation through awareness, understanding, and the discipline to put this thing to work. Seriously, get your butt out of Skatomaville and keep going. You can do it. I've done it. <laughs>